welcome to Xena Warrior Podcast. My name is Vera, and I'm joined, as always, by my two seductive co-hosts, Katie. Hello. And Livy. Hi. Should I put the Natalie Merchant on? Obviously. <laughs> Press is play. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be talking about a very fun episode, 518 Antony and Cleopatra. Mm-hmm. But before that, we have some news of the day. Uh... Well, we're going to be off next week. That's basically the news. But we're going to be doing that because yeah. we're going to Dragon Cone. Yes. Yes. Labor Day weekend. Yes. The annual excursion to see all things nerdy and sci-fi and whatever else is there. There's so much. <laughs> Mai Tais are there. That's all yes. I care about. Mai Tais. But one of the last Trader Vicks mm-hmm. in America. Hooray. Yep. It's the best. Mm-hmm. I don't care about any other parts of the con. <laughs> just, just the my time. So part. we can experience married with fish sticks all over again. Exactly. <laughs> at the Hilton. <laughs> yeah, if you're at Dragon Con and you see us in maybe like a Zena Jenna first shirt, yeah. say hi. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, no episode on Monday because we will be there. So yeah, we will return with looking death in the eye a week from <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever date that is. Some kind of September I date. think September 10th. Yeah, that sounds right. Sure. Uh, all right. Well, I now... I can't believe we're on that stretch. I know. It's kind of crazy. It is crazy. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny because um, uh, reading about this episode, like, RJ... This was, like, RJ Stewart's first sort of script that he worked on once co- after coming back from Cleopatra 2525. Cleopatra got, got, to Cleopatra. Yep, yep. You're like, oh, you know Cleopatra's. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> uh, and it and it feels it's really good. It's this episode was I don't know, I remembered it only as oh, the one that has the Natalie Merchant ridiculousness. Right. And I was like and they wear outfits, so it's like silly as fuck. But it was really good. I think so too. <laughs> so yeah, we're back. And it's this stretch. <laughs> yeah, the, I think Xena's fully back yeah, now. Yeah, fully, we fully recognize back. Uh, Antony and Cleopatra was actually first conceived as like being like an early episode in season five, like more as a direct sequel to Ides of March. Mm. So I think that's part of why it's delivering wow. some like you know peak season four realness mm. in oh. that. Yeah, it was actually, I think big chunks of it were written like, wow. before they knew that Lucy was pregnant. And then yeah. when they found and out then they she were was like, pregnant. oh, too sexy. Cannot, <laughs> cannot huh. do. That's yeah. Interesting. So yeah, they put it on ice until she was up to it and right. then dusted it off. The and- return to Xena's sexuality after she was a big old <laughs> whale pregnant lady. What? Oh, so That's what Rob rude. said, not me. That is That's basically that is what Rob, Rob said. Yeah. <laughs> that they wanted to like reestablish the sex. That moms are hot too. Love it. Oof, it right. is very noticeable that they just like shunt <laughs> Eve it. off. Like, oh, I love that. <laughs> the man, they were as eager to get rid of that baby as Katie is. Yeah, this has to be the episode <laughs> that like since Animal Attraction, like the baby is not mentioned. Like the only episode of season five that's they, like they that. said where the baby yeah. was, yeah. just so that yeah, one the, mention, yeah, one just mention. so you're not concerned. <laughs> Yeah, it would have been really annoying if they had brought the baby along with them. <laughs> I'm not sure how it, it would have worked. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's weird in that it doesn't really like fit into the continuity of the season so well. I mean, it's obviously very closely connected to the Roman episodes from season four and earlier, but like, you know, no mention of the gods. All right, the, the gods should have like gone and killed this baby right this episode. <laughs> yeah, no, she was real. I mean, she only, she only had Cyrene to defend her. Oh my god, that's really a good point. <laughs> left the baby. Yeah. During yeah. the oh, that's, that's not right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So as mentioned, five eighteen, Antony and Cleopatra, written by Carl Ellsworth and directed by Michael Hurst. Carl Ellsworth is a new name. Yep. He uh, wrote the Buffy episode Halloween. That's not the one where she dresses, or they mention Buffy, right? Mention Xena. Oh, sorry. Yes. (laughs) They would mention it. Yeah. Ah, So that's funny. That's really cool for him. He wrote that before Xena, but now here he is on Xena, not (laughs) mentioning Buffy. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> He's actually also the writer of Looking Death in the Eye for okay. uh, next week. Wow. So. A Carl Ellsworth two-parter. Uh, and then he, he's gone on to write some uh, psychological thrillers. Uh, in the film world, he wrote the, the reboot of Red Dawn and the reboot of Last House on the Left. Oh, I okay. saw that. That was good. He also did Disturbia, which is a good movie. Oh, I don't like those so. other pieces of shit. <laughs> and Red Eye, which oh, yeah. is a good trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a movie that exists. And apparently he's writing Gremlins 3. That, oh, yes, that's please. That's going to be a thing. Thanks, Carl. I needed that. <laughs> and then, yeah, Michael Hurst, Michael director. Michael Hurst. This What's is- his last one that he did? He well, technically, oh. he did Lifeblood. Oh, right. that, was, that right. does not count. <laughs> <laughs> the last real one. Uh, he did a Tale of Two Muses most recently. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, this is the Michael Hurst that I know. <laughs> like literally, this is him, kind of like progressing to uh, the stuff that is my fave stuff that he does. Like, later when he directs a lot of Spartacus. Right, and he's... Uh, I think I mentioned it previously. If you watch his commentaries on Spartacus, you will go to film school. That's like, two that Spartacuses, is... now three. So, drinking game, every time I say something about Spartacus, I mean, this one's going to be a good one for that. For that. I think it's going to come up. <laughs> yeah. I think this lot. visual style that he has here is very Spartacus. Like, yeah. we haven't quite the, seen... The beginning of the slow-mo. Yeah, slow <laughs> like all these like luscious close-ups yeah. like we haven't seen this kind of camera work from him right so. but I mean before even that it's kind of like the first thing like he his best episodes of Xena I mean obviously A Day in the Life but not visually is not what I'm talking about mm-hmm. like season six work is phenomenal mm, Gurkhan and other things <laughs> <laughs> yes but like you know that's some beautiful like you know, grown up imagery, etc. Mm-hmm. I just love it, and uh, I think this is the first time you kind of see that from from this director. Sweet, yeah. I would say that's in some ways the star of the episode is the directing. It's just really, yeah, really good. Mm-hmm. It looks like no other episode of Xena, and you know we've had a lot of different kind of you know, Rome episodes, different Rome episodes. But I was just gonna say, like, you know, directors bringing in their own visual mm. look. And I yeah. feel like this is unique in, mm-hmm. in ways that we'll call out. And of course, that Natalie Merchant song makes it Woo! very unique. Yes, it sure does. <laughs> and also, if you happened to only watch Xena recently before it was taken off of Netflix, you can watch this episode now on Hulu because it wasn't on there because of yes. the music rights. So if that's how you watched Xena, go find this mysterious yeah, episode and that you may you not have seen. You also must have missed the second musical yeah, because liar, also liar. that one was not on there. Yeah, it was really funny because weren't we like, why is this one missing? And then yeah. we watch it, it's like this oh. huge <laughs> scene. Yeah. Well, that music, man, it's such a problem. Yeah. It fucks up a lot of shows. Mm-hmm. And vids. Mm-hmm. What? Oh, right. Yeah. 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 They pull your vids for... Mm-hmm. Stupid stuff, Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so let's begin. This episode starts with a big old milk bath Mm -hmm. and some butts. (laughs) And we are introduced to Cleopatra number two. Huh. Huh. I miss Gina Torres. This one's, yeah, this is not Gina Torres who could not, I mean, they didn't want to call her in, right? According to RJ? I think. In a apparently a very early draft of the script, before they decided to kill Cleopatra off in the first scene, mm, they th- Ephony flashbacks. <laughs> they thought she would have a bigger role, like she would kind of be like hanging out somewhere, like pretending to mm. be dead while Xena was like filling mm. in for her. Uh, and then at that point, they wanted Gina Torres, but I guess when they realized it was such a small part, it didn't right. seem we as don't worth need it. We to bring her in. Yeah, well, let's get this. White lady to yeah, do it? Yeah, why? And a lot of bronzer. And a lot of bronzer. There's a lot of bronzer all over the place That's with her, her attendants uh, also. Can we off the what? top just throw that coin in there for Egypt? Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just for general. them Going doing this. Egypt. Oof, there's yeah. a lot of wigs. There's bronzer. There's <laughs> maybe one POC actor who's an extra who doesn't get any lines. <laughs> this is true. I mean, Cleopatra oh, doesn't but she need... Anna. I think we talked about this in whatever episode Cleopatra was in previously. Yeah. But, like, she was a white lady, historically. Mm. 
she's like an imperialist. But the show, it's, it's <laughs> a, I'm actually talking about, well, no, like, number one, the setting of Egypt, but then number two, the show recasting a black actress with a white actress. Yeah, and then... Re, you know, taking that character out and replacing her with Xena. Right. <laughs> sort of, lots of erasure going on. Yeah. So, it's just a, a layer upon layer. Yeah, it's, it's many right. layers, but definitely they could have just not done the bronzer, and I think it yeah. would have helped. Her enormously. attendants, though, are, are uh, POC, right? Maybe the one that doesn't one get any of lines. them. Yeah, Shiana isn't. Oh, I I did I don't not know look her into Shiana's heritage. heritage, but I don't know. To me, it looked like a bunch of white ladies in brown face, and it was eyebrow raising. So let's move on from <laughs> this. Eyebrow raising. Let's just uh, yeah. So well, she climbs to the bath. I have a note that says her profile is very Lucy Lawless esque. So I can see how how this she mistake would just could be made. Fill in. Uh, so she's in a milk bath, and this advisor brings uh, her the plot of this episode, which is that Rome is in civil war, and we have two sides. We have the Brutus and Octavius side, and then we have the Mark Antony side. And they are both trying to come to Egypt and get her navy. Right. It's the greatest navy in the world. Whoa. The advisor warns her that either they're going to court her or they're going to eliminate her. Uh Uh-oh. Which is it going to (laughs) be? Definitely the courting. I mean, it's both. Yeah, it's both, actually. (laughs) They each take a different strategy. So there's, like, these two advisors. One is speaking, one is... Isn't oh my goodness, they are wearing clothes. <laughs> they are clothes. Oh my goodness. The uh the one who's speaking, he looks like he's straight out of like Stargate SG1. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. The, I thought he looked like budget Jeremy Irons. Yes. In a Stargate. Also in a Stargate yeah. suit. <laughs> uh the other one is my fave extra, the one who uh made himself very known in the execution of Crassus. <gasps> I didn't register that him. Was him. I love they trot him out for He's Roman back. episodes. <laughs> He's back. <laughs> so anyway, she gets some, uh, another dude comes in and brings like a scroll, and there's all these like pointed looks between all the yeah, handmaids and a, the guy. It's a very like quiet scene. Yeah, like there's not that much dialogue, and you have all these significant looks. Yeah, it makes you go like, what's happening? Mm-hmm. Who's gonna kill who in this scene? Something's important. But there is one very funny line of dialogue. Oh my god, what when was Cleopatra's it? like, is it just me, Shanna, or do crises always happen when I'm naked? <laughs> you like that one? I like it. Uh-huh. It was funny. It's it was uh-uh. very winky wink about Xena in general, oh, in which shit. nudity does <laughs> coincide with trouble. So she opens the parchment and the scroll or whatever, and um, well, something like flops into the milk bath and <laughs> bites her. <laughs> flops. I in. like how you don't see it though, right? Yeah. You, you don't, don't see it. it. You don't see it yet. You see, um, you get just like a cue on the soundtrack, and like yeah. you see her react. Mm-hmm. She yeah. looks down, and you go, "Did she just get bit in the boob?" Mm-hmm. And then it turns out she kind of did. She did, because that's what people like to say happened to Cleopatra. <laughs> It's not true. <laughs> she was not bitten in the boob. <laughs> but everybody likes that. I wonder why. Well, I like it in here because the visuals are really kind of fun. There's a little bit of a... I don't know how I feel about how saturated everything looks. Like, it's very red and the yeah. blood in the milk. But it mm-hmm. looks very cool anyway. And then the snake... Asp? Yeah, yeah. What is it? Yeah, asp. Slithers off and it kind of looks like a green rubber thing, which it likely <laughs> <Was>. is. <laughs> I thought it looked realistic. At the same time, it looks really yeah. cool, so I yeah. don't care. <laughs> I thought it looked cool. I really love the extreme close-ups like of her as she's dying that then mm. pans down to the Yeah, moment. that was really cool. So, yeah, it was like a final sort of like transition from like Cleopatra. I mean, okay, so she gets bit. She looks down. She's like, whoa. Uh, and she calls Shan over and whispers to her, take this message to Xena. Xena. And then, yeah, so then she kind of is poisoned um, and dies. And there is this dramatic like music cue. And they pan down and dissolve from her to the from the snake in the yeah. milk 
to the Egyptian ruins. I mean, not ru- they're not ruins. They're fresh. They're pyramids <laughs> that are not ruins. They are just built. <laughs> they're in very nice condition. They are. They did the the little painting, like included, you know, their, the top layer that's gone now from it. You know, they were very uh, smooth. So w- one more note about the death scene is just like, I like how it plays with the idea, you know, that you, you kind of already know about this. Like, you know, the, the like final reveal that it was a snake that did it. Yeah. It, like, it's kind of hoping that the audience is like, oh, is it a snake? And then <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, snake. Yeah. So I, I, I like that. And, you know, th- it's always fun when Xena is doing kind of a story that everybody knows it's famous but yeah. putting its own twist on it so killing Cleopatra right away not by suicide is you're immediately like whoa nah. what's gonna happen yeah I mean I'm like obviously I love Xena so it's fine but at the same time I was like oh they like killed off Cleopatra's huge personality and they've been building the fucking, her up yes remember? in the teaser yes <laughs> they've been building her up in like the last five episodes <laughs> so they kill her right away yeah, so I was a little bummed out because you know it's like a cool lady, and you want her to interact with Zena. As you recall, they were seriously flirting in her mm-hmm. previous appearance. Yeah, so this is a bummer. The ship sank before it got to <laughs> float. No. <laughs> Well, this one's a big episode for ships all around. Oh, yeah. Including some actual boats. (laughs) Actual boats. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Snake transition. We got Xena and Gabs. They're in Egypt uh, in front of a green screen. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. This is a really bad green screen. What are you talking about? I swear the show's done this better at some point. Probably in Fallen Angel. (laughs) But what happened here? Uh, I don't know. I, I didn't mind. It, I was like, whatever, they did it. <laughs> so yeah, this is where we find out that Eve is with Cyrene. Yeah, they left her with Cyrene in Alexandria. So number one, yeah, they were traveling around with. Cyrene they went on vacation. No, I want it. I want that episode where they just go on a family vacation I with know. Cyrene. It's so cute. Number two, I didn't even think of it until you said it earlier, but yeah, the continuity with the Twilight is a little messed up. I don't think they would leave this baby out of their sight. Whatever. <laughs> what if, like, she was like, the Egyptian gods would will protect her here? I mean, a throwaway line would have been helpful, <laughs> even if you would still have questions. Um, yeah, that would have made... Sense. You'd be like, oh, okay, they were not coming here. It yeah. definitely would have been cool to have some Egyptian gods I on know. hand. That, that oh. would be a very different episode. Very Stargate. Yeah. Maybe do you think they were thinking about that? Like, that's a Stargate territory. <laughs> <Can't do> that. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. <laughs> we're not about those Stargates. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, also like Gabrielle being like, oh, are you sure you want to do this, Xena? And Xena's like, yeah, we owe it to Cleopatra. And she's like, we're doing this. We're doing this episode. Mm -hmm. She says, first we become Egypt and then we take on Rome. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. So first they need to put on some outfits. Yeah. Obviously (laughs) become Egypt means put on outfits. Put on lots of eye makeup. Oh, yeah. So then we meet uh, our Mark Antony. Mm-hmm. Oh, before that, there's a fun painting-esque establishing shot of, I guess, where he's hanging out. I oh, yeah. Know, I, I mean, there's a lot of fun a... painting-esque We're establishing shots. We're in Egypt. Shots. Yeah. Stu- I liked this one. It looked cute. Yeah, you had, like, the Nile in there. Yeah. yeah. It is, you felt like you were in a different yeah. place. Well, it's know? like as opposed to the green screen they were in front of. I felt Except like they were right there. Lot, which I didn't understand. <laughs> Did you notice, like, oh, I didn't, I, I was bad and didn't look it up, but, like, pretty sure, like, all the pyramids were built by the time Cleopatra was around, right? I think so. I feel like I only saw two in there. Maybe they were just blocking the third one. Yeah, I okay. think so. All right. Well, there was no Pizza Hut next to it, like how <laughs> there is now, so it's fine. Is that a, a real fact? I mean, there's, like, you know, touristy uh, Vera, Vera stops. has been to Egypt. I yes, and I hung out with Mark, Mark Antony too. So. <laughs> but, but while he was married to J Lo, or <laughs> yeah, we have jokes. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun trip. It was a good time. Oh, but to Egypt, I've, see I've, the pyramids. I've been in the oh, in the fun. Great Pyramid. It was crazy. Uh, <laughs> wow. So. Mark Antony here is played by Manu Bennett, but he's credited as John Bennett. 
Yeah. Because he was going by John then. I guess so. Mm -hmm. That happens. That happens. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you have like a Maori name and are trying to, I guess, not... Not be that. (laughs) Not (laughs) know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yeah. Well, we know him, obviously, from his work on Spartacus. Spartacus. And also That's the Shannara Chronicles. Yes, Shannara Chronicles. I'm sure he probably showed up on Legend of the Seeker, but oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. I know he's a, a major character in Arrow. Well, he broke through from New Zealand <laughs> out of it. And he's in uh, The Hobbit as, like, I f- forget his name, Azog, the big <laughs> the big orc guy, mocap. Oh, he was the mocap dude? Yeah. Oh, man. All right. That's I a, love him. <laughs> he's a wonderful actor. I think he's amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah, this, so hot. this, perf- you know, this <laughs> episode, <laughs> well, I mean, which I'm to build on what Katie's <laughs> saying, like, this episode, you know, wouldn't work if you didn't, this would be another Ulysses <gasps> if you didn't buy oh. the guy here playing Mark Anthony. I buy it. And he's so Sold. hot. But Ulysses is literally the opposite of her type. <gasps> yeah. Like that made it really hard. Yeah, right. that's, that's why a good point. it was a problem yeah. back then yeah. as well. Now they've figured out Zena's yes, type. Yes, and, and it, it's... it's smoldering. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is really fun. Like this was the beginning of their, you know, long standing like work relation because in yeah. Spartacus they have a lot of scenes together too yeah and some of like <laughs> like the ones they have in this and I was like I want to watch Spartacus right now yeah <laughs> it's also just really good casting because like in <clears throat> Shakespeare Mark Antony's this very charismatic dude like mm-hmm. as opposed to Caesar or Brutus and I think this is a really good casting and that the second you see this guy you're like oh yeah this dude, the people would love this guy. Just mm. look at him. Just look at him. Right. And in the movie Cleopatra, starring Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, yeah. And which husband of hers? Uh, Richard one. Burton. Yes. Very charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we get this scene that is straight out of uh, Shakespeare here. No, actually, it's from George Bernard Shaw. Oh, it's not from Shakespeare? Because guess what? Guess what? This carpet trick <laughs> is not something she uses to seduce Antony in the source material. She uses it to seduce Caesar. Whoa. Because you got to remember that they were like also a thing. She well, had his kid. Oh, she had a lot of kids from yeah. a lot of these men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like her kid with Caesar, she wanted him to succeed right, Caesar. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's interesting. I mean, obviously they can't cover that because they don't have Carl around to help. Mm. But like, yeah, there's a lot of context that the show has carefully erased oh, yeah. because it would be confusing. Very so, yeah, confusing. The car- carpet seduction has been transplanted into Antony's story. That's fine. And again, most people know it from the classic film Cleopatra. <laughs> does, she, I, does she roll oh, out of the carpet? Like a, yeah, that's oh, like where... Oh, shit. I feel like it became mainstream. I didn't know that. Yeah. She oh, does that. Mm-hmm. That's the one where her like hair, Zena's hair wig is from, right? Yeah. The yeah. whole look the whole to me look was very Liz Taylor. Very yeah. specifically. Yeah. Listen, Vivian Lee did it too in classic Hollywood. <laughs> Everybody loves Everybody that brown face. <laughs> the, well, they didn't, they didn't do that. Well, oh, you mean like phys- like just doing the role yeah. Yeah, as opposed to like having makeup on. Yeah. yeah I get you. That. Yeah. But no, as I said, Cleopatra is the descendant of Ptolemy, who was Alexander the Great's dude. So like, they're Greeks. They're, they're Greek descendants. Mm. And they married each other, so... That's true. They white. Okay. Mm. At some point, though, the aliens did come down and intermix <laughs> with them. I'm just saying. That's Egypt. just That's what happens in canon. Egypt. <laughs> All right, so Antony gets uh, a gift, and it is a big old carpet. And I think that's a really weird gift to get. <laughs> I mean, it's I the think carpet, sir. He thinks it's pretty weird. He's like, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great, <laughs> just what I wanted to get. It comes with a message. <laughs> what was the message? Will Rome enter Egypt? Oh, arr, 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 arr. oh. gosh. Uh, my first thoughts were, oh man, I hope he's not worried about bed bugs because <laughs> that is a concern. <laughs> sure, he wasn't. So he unrolls the carpet, 
kicks it and it starts unrolling and oh my god. Waiter, there's a lady in my carpet. I like how the carpet rolls toward the camera. It's fun. That's true. That's a really fun effect. This whole reveal is well executed. Fear, are what? you okay? Why are you giggling Sorry, so Sorry, I just read my, what my note was. It says, it does have a bed bug and her name is Xena. Uh, <laughs> I see you. Except she says, I am Cleopatra, queen of Egypt, slave of Rome. Oh, oh wiggle them eyebrows. Yeah. So there's a lot happening right now. Yeah, including her uh, chain dress with that she's look. wearing. Yeah. Yeah, the look. Yeah. Starting with being like all splayed out, most likely not least. See that shot? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because most of the time she doesn't have to be there. If you don't see her face, she's not there. She did say in the like (laughs) DVD commentary that the dress gave her a rash for like two weeks. Oh no! Oh no! Maybe maybe she was her. I gotta go back and look more intensely. (laughs) Why I have to admit to not confirming with my eyes? (laughs) But very sexy. It's made Whoever of chains, you are. like a chain bikini. Yeah. Oh, is it like Slave Leia? Ugh. I mean, that's kind of the vibe, yeah. Is it? All right. She's got the eye makeup. I like the yeah. little gold tips on the corners of her eyes. Very cool. Sure. <laughs> Love that jingling sound effect. Yeah, she jingle. <laughs> <laughs> so what else happens? Well, he's kind of like into it. He comes over. This is a pretty big... And strong come on. And she's like, immediately kisses him and goes like, won't you free me? And then when she moves back, he finds a key in his mouth. (laughs) That's some good magic tricks. They start sort of flirting immediately. He's like, surely this is about you capturing me. Which is clever of him. Like, he, he gets it. He gets what's going on. He gets that she's trying to yeah. work him. And yeah. she's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, his, he, he unlocks her. His key oh, slips into oh, her no. locks. Oh, no. <laughs> and she has, like, this, like, orgasm face. Yeah. She's so, so into uh, it immediately. I mean, I know the she, fall. She's playing it up, but I think... Uh, yeah, she's, it's not in, yeah. even in, in this first scene. She's yeah. already kind of feeling it. So immediately she's using her, uh, you know, wiles because she's naked right, as soon as that dress falls off. But he's too much of a gentleman and hands her, you know, a little cover up. He wants a relationship built on trust and openness. <laughs> I thought this was so funny. I love her response. I think we got the openness cover. <laughs> As for trust, I couldn't have come here in a more vulnerable state. Mm, true. So she invites him to her palace. We cut to the palace and we meet Brutus. We haven't seen him in a while. No. Which was an interesting point about how this was supposed to be from earlier in the season. Because now... What with how news travels on this show, how does he not know that they are alive? It's true. And that all this shit has gone down. Hmm. He's been busy. Okay. He's been really busy in Rome. Got it. Yeah, he has his own dealings. Good. I really like his just silent reaction when he sees Gabrielle. Yeah. Like, I mean, and also look it's his weird. Face. It's totally, right. It's like <laughs> double. It's You are reminded by looking at his face that he always kind of had a thing for her. And then you're reminded, oh yeah, he doesn't know that they survived. Yeah. He's like, and she's here and to- dressed like this. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a <laughs> there's lot. There's a lot for his little, <laughs> little brain to handle. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's, like, a whole, like, whoosh, kind of, like, dramatic whoosh sound effect as, like, the camera, like, moves into his face, reacting to her. And uh, it's it's kind of like the ultimate, like, surprise bitch. Yes! <laughs> yes. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, Gabrielle can't let him see Cleopatra, or he will know that Cleopatra is dead. I really thought they were going to, like, weekend at Bernie's her. <laughs> oh, no! That would not have been I respectful. <laughs> I love how she is mad at Brutus for not having been there for the crucifixion. Yes. I yes. wasn't quite sure what she meant by that. She thought he could have prevented it. Or at least done her the honor of 
presiding. Yeah, see, yeah seeing her. Certainly, he's very. He does not want to do it when he's at that base, right? He's he's like, we're not doing it, and then goes back to Rome, and then they do it. Right. I think that's what happened. Well, they do it, but he doesn't come back to yeah. be like, oh yeah, this was happening. It just seemed weird to me that Gabs is so resentful about this because, like, he goes back to Rome and kill Caesar, yeah. which is what like I'm she curious. and Zena wanted him to do. <laughs> he never called it off. I'm curious that maybe it's one of those times where a dramatic line reading changed it. Oh, it's, so she should have been like, more like, you, you should have been, been there. But there not like that. But not like that. It, but it, it's because it's a direct response to like, you survived the crucifixion. They didn't. And then it was crazy. And it, yeah. it might just oh, be so one she of those like, oh, you should have like, been there. Like, it was so but crazy. like, I don't know that that was necessary. I don't know. I don't know. I just were trying to get to the bottom of but this they line. Had, like, they had maybe like that's a, what it meant. I think it was <laughs> supposed to play up to their relationship because they mm-hmm. had mm. they had a trust a, a thing. Yeah, yeah, I know, and like some yeah. kind of attraction based on. Whatever. She thought he was, like, yeah. a good dude. No, that makes sense. And he was, like, on her side. I'm just trying and to make so. it less confusing. This uh, is a slightly strange sentiment. But we get, yeah, that there is just some bad feeling on Gabrielle's side. Yeah. So he insists on delivering uh, a message to Cleopatra because he's like, you in danger, girl. And Gabs is like, well, I'll tell her. And then also, like, you know, she's hanging out with Xena. And he's all like, oh, Xena's arrived too. Oh. I like this little bit where Xena kind of supermans. She's dressed as Cleopatra and then is told that oh, yeah. Brutus is there. So she's quickly like, <laughs> in the phone booth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's she's like, like, hello, Brutus. Brutus. Yeah. So he warns her that. Octavius and Antony are both untrustworthy. That Octavius is like a murdering opportunist. Don't trust him. Mm. But who's he really talking about? Is it himself? Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, and then a lot of this scenes, like this, the one we're talking to Xena, and then like the one where he first marched into the palace to like demand to speak to Cleopatra, I thought was really interesting because he's, I mean, he's not a tall man, but like it really like made him seem small because he kept being like I demand to do this and that and they're all like literally like you don't demand things here like you don't have a say here and they kept um he kept like trying to walk into like people that was just blocked by people I don't know he was just trying to be like a big macho man he was really failing at it and it's it's also interesting like in the you know all these Egyptian sets you generally have the attendants yeah kind of lounged around it's like a very like female space like, well, but not the guys, like, from the hieroglyphs who stand in the back. <laughs> That's true, but they're, like, very, like, in the back. I feel like this is very... It's, it's, it's interesting to have, like, the Roman dudes coming in and being like, whoa, you know, <laughs> so much female power everywhere yeah. I look. I feel uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. my God. And, like, Shiana's, like, always there just, like, hanging out and staring at you. Yeah, Shiana's <laughs> very, like... There's something, like, kind of, yee, it, yeah. like, I was worried because I thought she had done it. I oh, my God. Yeah. She I was mean, the murderer. I really thought so, too, because, like, why was there all those looks between the people delivering the asp, you know, yeah. and it then giving it to weighted. Cleopatra? It, I really thought it was going to be revealed that it was, like, an inside job, like, from the mummy. Yeah, movies. Shiana's part <laughs> in this is very, <laughs> very strange. I like that reference. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that got me in the middle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, Shiana, what's her deal? Yeah, what is her deal? Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> so Shiana, speaking of her, uh, was tasked with like giving Mark Antony a tour of the palace so Zena can go and talk to Brutus as Zena. Um, now she uh, wants to know, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with him? We gave him the tour already. And so Zena's like, ah, oh, the bath. I love it. Zena's answer to everything <laughs> yeah. is the bath. So it's not a milk bath. It's a regular one. And uh, she's in it. And the girls are all, like, pampering her. Including Gabrielle. <laughs> lots, lots of oils. <laughs> Antony has quite a line here to... Uh, oh, I should say oh. that Gabrielle's uh, name, like, mm-hmm. uh, Zena introduces her as her companion, Eris. Eris is from Shakespeare, from Antony and Cleopatra, an mm. attendant in the play. So that's consistent. Nice. <laughs> well. Oh, yes. Antony's line. If I were your hands, Eris, I would be fortunate indeed. Mm-hmm. And Gabs has this, like, 
uncomfortable face. She's <laughs> like kind of amused by the flirting, but it's also like, oh, I can't believe I'm like party to this. Like <laughs> they're making me a part of it. Uh. The use of Gabrielle reaction shots in this episode is the best thing about this episode. Yeah. Yes. It's really well, true. And, and the Natalie Merchant. And the Natalie Merchant. <laughs> and also, so, like, a lot of other things are also yeah. very good. <laughs> so this is another, like, weird <laughs> scene where Auntie makes weird eye contact with Shanna. Like, I don't get the amount of coverage on this. I don't know. It's maybe there was odd. a subplot that was yeah. going to be there that they removed. Because, yeah, Shanna gets a lot of weird moments that seem like they're building up to something. Yeah. And they don't really. So Zena's like, okay, everyone, leave. But then Antony... He's like, no, no, everyone stay. Yeah. He's like, I'm playing hard to get. Oh, He's it's... already supped full of pleasures and has some guy stuff to attend to. <laughs> so. <laughs> he talks like a purple poetry man. Well, that's way... I mean, later, like, that's the most, like, yeah. the ultimate. Yeah. Uh, that's is, Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare. But, yeah, that's, it's funny that, like, all, he basically gets all the Shakespearean yeah. lines because it's, it, I guess it's sexy. I, it is I sexy. I mean, I guess. <laughs> if only Shakespeare really came up with that carpet trick. <laughs> Supped full of pleasures is, I think, a Macbeth line. Supped full of horrors. Different. It's different. <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> I think he's talking about that melon. That yeah, he's, later he's eaten eat. so much melon already. So, can't have any more. <laughs> After he leaves, uh, Gabs is like reacting to him, like, "Oh man, this guy." <laughs> <laughs> that is basically what she says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> But then she's like, well, how do you know that he was going to be like, no, to your bath, you know, invite? <laughs> and Zena looks a little hurt. She's like, I did it. Oh, he doesn't like me. Disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> so then, all right, so then it's nighttime and we're in uh, Cleo's bedroom. Ooh, I like all these establishing shots yeah. of her stuff. Yeah, there was Detail. a lot. Yeah. yeah. She has a lot of, like, Egyptian stuff. <laughs> And also, like, what is it? A, a tiger rug on the floor? Uh oh. Was that the same one? Yeah, no. was that a re- I like no. to think it's a callback yeah. to a call Destiny. <laughs> I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of destiny in this episode. It's mm-hmm. all about seduction and boats. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. And Caesar. Yeah. yeah. His shadow hangs over it, even it though does, his name... you heard Well, you heard the Caesar music when Brutus came in. Right. That's very true. Yeah. So. All right, so a creepy creeper is, like, creeping towards her, and it's kind of scary. He grabs... Yeah, I didn't like that. Like, he's, like, trying to come near her as yeah. she's sleeping. <laughs> creeping along. You got some exposed arm to apply <laughs> naked vulnerability once again. Even, even on Xena, question yeah. mark. Uh, question I like mark. the music, right? Because, yeah. like, it, like, stops when she opens her eyes for, like... I don't know, like 10 seconds. They hold on that for yeah. a long time. Like it, The tension, it's so uh, tense. <laughs> so she, you know, she's Xena. So she flips. <laughs> she is yeah. Xena. I'm she not flips this creeper over and then asks if he's her assassin. But nope, it's like this small boy it's person. Not a small boy. A just young a man. A boy. <laughs> and then there's fireballs. There's a lot of cocktails flying uh, through the window. Apparently, this was a very dangerous stunt. It mm. looks. It looked like yeah. pretty yeah. legit. Yeah. Wait, did you say people? Did someone get burned? No, no. no. <laughs> they <had> just, <laughs> no. I, I forget if it was Michael Hurst talking about it or, or somebody else in in the team. Just I think it was uh, Donald Duncan, the oh, right. DP. Right, who we should call out because this is actually yeah. his last episode of Xena before I think he, he goes got to Lord of the Ringed. Lord of the Rings. Rings. <laughs> yeah. So he, got he got ringed. He got ringed. But yeah, he he said that like the fire spouts were just like really near to Lucy. Yeah. yeah. Like, it made him nervous. But it looked really good. It did. <laughs> it did. So um, yeah, the room is on fire. It's also it was kind of funny, I feel like I don't know what happened. Was he stuck between two fires, Octavius? I don't know. I think she caught like, on fire. He was oh, like, I'm on fire. He pretty he on, was fire. on fire. But yeah, yeah. and it she just like jumped like on she him. jumped and pushed him like if he had turned around and ran out <laughs> Door, oh yeah, he like, could have. Yeah. Instead of like 
screaming that way. Through. Maybe because he, he caught, caught fire, fire and just was, couldn't stop, drop, and roll. She had to do it for him. He wasn't thinking clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. We find out that like the fire bombs are actually meant for him. Mm-hmm. Well, so he this thinks kid. That. He yeah, thinks that's what this. he thinks. I'm sorry, yes. I said who it was. So yes. Oh yeah, sorry. that's okay. Surprise! <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yes, it's this Octavius. is Octavius. Yeah, he's Caesar's grand nephew and adopted son. Right, great. <laughs> and the people who who killed Cleopatra probably want him dead too. Does that make sense? Well, like, it, it's when we as find far out, as age oh, for like Carl Urban Caesar to, to have, have this grand nephew or whatever it was. I mean, sure. I don't know how old his sibling is, I guess. Oh, okay. His grand, sure. I don't know, grand nephew. You're right. That's confusing. Uh, yeah. Oh, don't, think it too don't, don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. It's fine. All the ages it's are confusing. fine. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, they're in the hallway uh, talking about this. And then... Brutus comes up, right? No, Antony. Oh. Because Antony's, like, running around with his sword, being like, I'll protect you, and then he comes up. No, over. Brutus, but Brutus is there, too, I think. No. Brutus is the one who's, who tells us about how this is Octavius oh. and a traitor. Oh, oh really? He did? Yeah. It's oh. weird, because my notes say it's Antony, but, you know, whatever. Antony calls Octavius a traitor. Says my notes as well. Oh, maybe I just miswrote it. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. I called Shakespeare's writing purple prose. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. right. I'll it was, this. though. It was, yeah. I mean, especially, like, delivered by how he delivered it. In this <laughs> extra. context, it was yeah. absurd. <laughs> I guess her Brutus wouldn't just be striding around Brutus the palace. Got, yeah, he got, like, shoot out before. Remember, he left in, like, this awkward huff. You know what the issue is? What? It's because there's that line about it's it's not that I love Caesar less, I love Rome more. Yeah, yeah. but that's Antony. It's an Antony line, but guess what? In Shakespeare, it's a Brutus line. Oh. That's what Well, I know why Cena <laughs> and Brutus didn't say this. <laughs> it was Antony. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Antony is there, and he's trying to, you know, wave his sword around and, like, be like I'm here man protecting you Cleo it's fine and then yes he we have this discussion about how he no likey Octavius (laughs) and he's a traitor and all that he's like ill-equipped for the throne I think because he's 12 (laughs) (laughs) sure and then she Xena or whatever as Cleo asks like how can I tell that you're not involved in this plot oh he's got a good answer to this (laughs) so he whispers in her ear I came here to put out the fire in, in your loins. <laughs> All the lines, like, are good in this one yeah. episode. Sometimes they can be bad, and you're like, oh, no, a line. They're all That's real. No, They're great. really They're fun. All great. They're yeah. really fun. Listen, and delivered like well. He's like, we have unfinished business, and then kisses her cheek, and then she bursts into flame. <laughs> And there is also a another one of those great Gabrielle reactions. Yes, shots. yes, this, this is so important. I was gonna say this is our first uh, Natalie Merchant song usage out of the two. <laughs> what you don't hear it, but you know it is playing, and it's her other hit single, "Jealousy." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it's so good though, because it's. I mean, it's like you're saying, and like we've said, like in the last few episodes, with the show being back on track and like actually clocking that this is a relationship issue for Gabrielle, and like, but in in every instance, like going forward, she's there or in the background, and like the, they take the time to show her having a emotion and a yeah. reaction to this whole scenario, and yeah. it's really important. The, are you gonna say the next line because it's so good? Uh, I'm losing sight of your plan. Are you gonna flirt him to death? Yeah. That one. <laughs> yeah, I just love it. <laughs> well, the whole scene I wrote down because it's like. I love them talking about Zena's dude type. Yeah, she's like, be careful, he's your type. Yeah, (laughs) she knows at this point. So yeah, the plan, according to Zena, is to let him try to seduce her uh, for the Navy, and then she's like, and then I'll have him on his knees. 
figuratively, figuratively speaking. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everything is good. And then, wait, you go to Shiana a uh, reaction at that, and she's like, SMH, yeah, shaking she, her head. She thinks it's a dumb plan because it is. <laughs> I'm going to let him seduce me, and then his judgment will be clouded, she says, with clouded judgment. <laughs> Okay, guys. Yeah. Oh, get ready. Cue the Natalie Merchant. Okay, yes. What the fuck is this scene? <laughs> Love it. <laughs> this like that time on... Mad Men used the Decemberist. Oh, my like, God. Like, it's that good. This went on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> it really did. Did this episode come in short? They were Maybe. like, can we just have, I like, a minute more Natalie Merchant? No. This episode loves close-ups, and especially loves them now in this sequence. Oh, it loves fuck. close-ups of grapes. <laughs> it loves close-ups of eyes. It loves <laughs> close-ups of cantaloupe. It does, like, yeah. close-ups and camera movement. Like, the camera keeps, like, moving back and forth between them. Oh, We're my like, God. Ooh. Like, especially if the line's like, my eyes, and then it's like, some <laughs> eyes. Eyes. <laughs> Have I been hypnotized? Yeah, because they're <laughs> so just She's been dickmatized. She's oh that's what she's been. Yeah. I like that when she dips it in the strawberry and the honey. I didn't like that. And then like licks the honey and then gives it to him. That Ooh. doesn't go. Those two do not that's go true. together. That's weird. I they did know. in ancient times. You put I honey guess. on everything. Duh. You didn't have chocolate, right. so. But a strawberry? I don't know. Well, I liked the choice of fruit because usually, I mean, there was no like banana, oh, which thank I was God. thinking before. But the cantaloupe, the that cantaloupe was, was going pretty it, like, far. Grapes Woo! and strawberries were like, fun. Yeah. like that seems. <laughs> Ac- I don't know. If, I don't accurate. know if accurate is the right word, but like fine. And then there's just like the cantaloupe thing. <laughs> well, it was just so drippy and weird. Well, One of it looked like it had makeup that. It- gone oh, on it but no. i think it was just how the cantaloupe oh my looked. god like, i mean i appreciate funny. the cantaloupe because that was very suggestive it was like the most suggestive fruit mm. out of the bunch mm-hmm. and i like yeah that it's anthony who gets oh, of it of course it is yeah. Uh, yeah good shit yeah. good shit yeah i like that it is kind of going both ways it's yeah. not just oral fixation you know on Zena's side are there yeah. any t- quotes about the song choice and why yeah oh yeah oh, oh that yeah. was the looks i just got <laughs> were amazing i mean i don't think that the song choice was like you know searched for like specifically like for a really long time they were like we gotta find the right song sure for this sure it was a temp track <gasps> laid down by the editor. Oh, my God. I don't know what they thought that they were going to be using. I, probably Jolo cool. music. Oh, okay. That's what they always use. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And they were like, Jolo, right on Natalie Merchant, like, Yeah, it tune, is weird please. that they put that down, though. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't exactly sound like the Zeta score. No. <laughs> and, uh, and then, like, the more they looked at it, the more they liked it. But, like, maybe they're just having fun. Like, they put it as a temp tag for... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. For I mean, they, yeah. they liked it so much, they bought it. Yeah. So put it I on there. It. It's the I... only use of contemporary music on Zena. Aside from Liar Well, Liar. besides, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but like that's a, a special That's like case. a thing. Yeah, this was or just... The, or, you know, uh, the Bee Gees in Married with Fish Sticks. Also a special case. Also a special case. Yeah. This, this is really is real. just over a scene. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's why I made that Mad Men comment, because it is yeah. just like you're in the context of ancient Egypt mm-hmm. and the time that they live in, and here's Natalie Merchant, where like, <laughs> there was that whole thing. Singing about walking them. through the streets of New York. It's such a weird <laughs> choice. Right. Like, yeah. and everybody was like, whoa, when like, the Mad Men used the December yeah. It was like a whole thing. Remember? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So- I mean, that was interesting. Right. I think this, this is also interesting. interesting. I mean, uh, you know, I think this episode <laughs> think feels different, and this is part of what makes it feel so yeah. different, is it has its music. You know, when do we have just, like, a silent seduction scene at all? Like, everything <sighs> about this scene is very unique. Well, all right, so the staging of this is that Auntie and Cleopatra are doing this, yeah. kind of like, whatever, by the by the bath, they're, like, laying, lounging somewhere. Oh, it's so funny, because this entire scene, up until basically the end, is covered in, clo- like, these intense mm-hmm. intimate close-ups and then it cuts to the wide shot yeah and then this like giant room with like people watching them and it's yeah. such an embarrassing it's, reveal yeah so like the reveal is that like they're doing this right with that music playing in their heads or whatever cut to the wide and in the background is the shiana and the other handmaid and, and gabs Gabrielle. being like what, what the, the fuck, fuck? <laughs> 
I think she bites her lip. Gabs. She does. She <laughs> does. I wrote that. She bites her lip. Jesus Christ. Because uh, it's just so like, I mean, it's all sexy. We've been watching all this sexy stuff. They're all like, what the fucking? And like, they're getting even more sexy as they go on. And it's just like, yeah. I don't know. Biting your lip is a very particular move. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think that it was a good choice. <laughs> It's a good choice. Yeah, good so choice. the, you know, seduction gets to, like, Spider-Man kiss territory with the honey and the strawberry business, and that's when Gabs is like, fuck <clears> this, <throat> record scratch. <laughs> she shoves herself into yeah. the frame. She inserts herself into the close-up. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah I so fucking great. loved it. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> like, so uh. funny. She's like, don't forget your meeting with yeah, your advisor. She's like, I am you have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. But then she goes even further. And once Antony has left the scene, she, she takes his, his place. Yeah. yeah. Like my spot. And 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 takes a strawberry. <laughs> yeah, she starts. Yeah, she with she the she's <laughs> I wish she'd reached over and like restarted the Natalie Merchant. Oh my god, right? <laughs> yeah. So Zena's like, you know, Zena's like into it. She's a little pissed. She's like, what are you doing? La la la. And, so know, I was in complete control. Yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> sure, Zena. Like, yeah. Sure. And basically, I was like, how far are you letting this go? Like, because now she, I mean, she can see. Yeah. She can see. <laughs> she also wiped the juices off of Zena's yeah, mouth. That was insane. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah. She's like, how far are you letting this go? Zena's like, until he begs for my navel. Your navy. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awkward. So so bad. I love it. Oh no. Oh no. But she like reassures Gavs that like, yeah, she knows Antony could have been the one who killed the real Cleopatra. And if that's the case, she's willing to kill him. She has no real feelings for him. Mm-hmm. Honest. Mm-hmm. And then Gabs is like, sure, Jan. Gabs yeah. should have totally been like, you're in denial. Oh. Get it? Get it? It's not See, that's just a, a rumor one. in Egypt. <laughs> Uh, but then again, we have like a long shot of Gabrielle contemplating all this goings on, eating a strawberry. Like, yeah, it's paying attention to her feelings. And Absolutely, I like it. So um, Shanna comes in, she brings us a flower, and she's like, "This is from Antony," and he invites Cena to meet him under the pyramids tomorrow night. Actually, she says the permits. She says permits. Yeah, the permits. <laughs> what the what? <laughs> permits. Um. <laughs> Gabrielle hates this so much. Yeah. She just hates it all now. I like her face. Oh, my God. Yeah. And Zena's like, perfect. I got him right where I want him. <laughs> Under, <laughs> Under the, the permits. <laughs> okay. So tomorrow night, cut to we meet them under the permits. Antony is like squatting in these like little ruins. There mm-hmm. are some ruins, even though you said That's that weird. all the things were built. I, I don't know. I guess maybe some of the uh, oldest it's ones. A long time yeah. period that we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> yeah. Are we not ancient Egypt know. and yeah. then Rome? Sure. Coming? But Very long. Whatever. They, <laughs> I don't know if this is accurate, guys. I don't know. But they Under the chose pyramids. to make some like ruins here. and he has like a little fire going oh, he's yeah. poking at it and he he's doing some philosophical lines <sighs> that are semi shakespearean our time on this earth is brief kingdoms are mere clay will rome surpass their majesty i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts, Anthony. Uh, it's like, I, was it Jack Handy a little oh, bit? <laughs> uh, I kind of liked it, though, because he is, uh, I thought he was, like, contemplating about, like, the pyramids in general, because it does, like, when you are there with them, it really does make you go, fuck, Egypt was a really long time ago, and this is, like, evidence of it, and it's still standing because it was built by aliens, but whatever. Stop uh, it. But, but Stop like, I can see how it. he would be there, you know, kind of like being like, whoa, is like Rome going to be this awesome? But like, you know, guess what? On his next show, Spartacus, uh, we find out that the Colosseum is still standing. That's true. Okay. <laughs> Thank so you there. for that. You're welcome. Also, that's the one where you can see like a Burger King there's a picture, a famous picture of the Coliseum, where it's like the Coliseum and a Burger King. Yeah, there's King. always like uh, Burger King will I mean, be standing I get it. forever. Forever, that like, is a kingdom. You know, it's <laughs> for just sure. cool that stuff still. Yeah, no, is, it's you can go it's really messed up. Around. Yeah, that's like 
I mean, Rome is a crazy place because it is like modern building, modern building, and then a ruin. Right. And then I've never modern been, building. so I wouldn't know. It's awesome. <laughs> so Zena is wearing this like leftover lifeblood costume, I think, like a cheetah. Oh, oh yeah. Sleeve. Oh, you're right. Like a cheetah sleeve. <laughs> Not her best look. <laughs> yeah, because it's cold. It's chilly out there, so she needed a little warm thing. They whisper sweet nothings in each other's ears <laughs> about the Navy. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, well, he, Aww. you know, he has one of those things where he, it's like a rom-com moment where he's like, I did come for your Navy, but now I love you, and that's all that's Oh, she's changed. all that? She's all yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, definitely a she's all it that. It started this way, but now it's real, I swear. She has her own she's all that moment later about mm. it, too. Being anyway. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Zena no, looks yeah. so beautiful. I just wanted to, mm. like, there's so many shots of her looking sad and yeah. crying and yeah, throughout the, crying. the rest of this episode. Well, this was a really good scene with blocking, I thought. Yes, yes, yes. Michael Hurst. Yeah. Here. I wrote staging. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah, like, first they're both around the campfire, but then mm-hmm. when they start having this intense conversation yeah. about feelings, Zena kind of, like, walks towards the camera. Mm-hmm. So now she's being lit by the moon, and he's being lit by the flames. And, like, the, you know, like the flames of passion <laughs> on Antony's face. And, and he's in the background, Zena yeah. more cool. Mm-hmm. Good shit. And, yeah, then you get this, like, camera movement where it, like, pans across her face, and you see the tears. Mm-hmm. Like, they're right. revealed. Which right. Is, which I was, like, scandalized. I was like, oh, my God, she's crying she's for this crying. guy. crying. This dude is really getting to Listen, her. he's very attractive. <laughs> well, I he's don't saying, care. He's saying some stuff to her, so I can see also, how it is. I feel like also in Zena's head, I hope, at least, she's understanding as well that, number one, she's Cle- Cleopatra, so she knows that she's deceiving this guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? She knows that she's doing a thing, and, like, she might have attractive feelings for him (laughs) and like I don't know what else is happening but like knows that it can't go anywhere right yeah Yeah. like he's willing to you know he's giving up his plan giving up I guess his fighting (laughs) Brutus in the civil war for her and she's sort of like cool yeah yeah, I'm into that I mean it's pretty romantic being you know hearing something like the first time I saw you, I knew a man would give right. up a kingdom for such a woman. What a line. Yeah. Like that's, that is a, a line. Weak yeah. in the knees from that. And you that's know, when she turns around. Her Sorry. romantic history mm-hmm. with men and with Romans, like she, yeah. right. I feel like she's never heard this from a man. Mm-hmm. You know, both Barias and Caesar kind of <laughs> did not say we're these not things. willing to give anything up for Zena. Could they eat cantaloupe as well? <laughs> so she is crying for him, or I mean, over this, and uh, he's into it, and she's into it, and they make out, and mm-hmm. it's a crane shot. That's so a kissing. You, you go to like sort of like the stars POV. The sexy, stars sexy POV. Time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sand. <laughs> Yeah, they're on this like little blankie. Mm-hmm. It's all super sexy. But then uh, Gabrielle somewhere says, thankfully, they were interrupted <laughs> by assassins. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, it's a hard. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> so, yeah. So all these assassins come. They are wearing like Roman outfits. Yeah. Uh, and Antony fights them. He fights them all. Right, because Zena, I guess, is still pretending to be yeah. Cleopatra. She's like, oh, no. A warrior. Oh, protect yeah. me. So, <laughs> but she does punch one of them. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, she's, got, she's Zena. Yeah. she got to get a hit in. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty brutal. It's um, in slow-mo. That's an important thing. Yeah. And, and it's pretty, yeah, like Very graphic. bloody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he does all the intense Slicey, things. Slicey, slice. Yeah. yeah. Lots of throats. And he's slit. very, I mean, this is something that we will see many times with Manu Bedit, but he's a very good at the at the fighting. Yes. Yeah. Really throws himself into it. He is a ferocious right. stunt guy. And one time he was, in 2015, assaulted, uh, arrested for an assault. So he likes to punch people. Oh, no. no. I don't, I don't, know, the, I don't know the circumstances, but Does I'm saying. Does that make him problematic? I don't know the circumstances. Put one in. Just put one in general. Like against a, a man. Yeah, I think okay. he got into oh. a, like a fight. Okay. A, I don't know where, but I was gonna get really. I don't think it was that. Oh, I did not no. investigate. Okay. He's wearing these like little blue pants. 
Did you know that under his like white dress? I did dress, not notice the little I blue thought pants. You can see them like a lot here because he's like in action. The skirt comes up. The skirts have little blue hems, like. Yeah, I mean, he's like his people are blue, and then yeah. Brutus is a red. Right. This is going to be important yeah. for later. And then like yeah. Octavius is like I don't even know, like a red and white kind of mm. Caesar mixture. Uh, actually, his, his colors remind me a lot of um, what's his name? The other one, the third. Not crass. Poppy? Loop. Yes, Poppy. So anyway, yeah, his little blue pants really stood out, I thought, here. <laughs> so, so he's got, yeah. like, the bloodlust. <clears throat> like, you see Xena watching him, and she, like, recognizes that he's a very passionate killer <laughs> as well as lover. I mean, it looks... It's weird because, like, they say these things, and I was like, it, it looked normal to me because that's how <laughs> Xena looks. That's true. And that's, well, maybe that's part that's, of the, yeah, problem. That's the problem. She sees yeah. someone who really enjoys violence, and it yeah. seems to disturb her. Right, and so we mentioned that the slow mo was important. Why was it important? Why was it important? Oh, okay. Well, I'll <laughs> you can answer it. your yeah. own question. Well, okay. So Michael Hurst wanted this to be in slow mo because he wanted to like point out that brutality of like in Antony, like the show him as a brute, yeah. which was interesting. Which you get, you definitely get, and you know we've only seen him kind of talking, being gentle, Sweet talking, yeah. and kind of schemy. So mm-hmm. actually seeing him as this warrior it's yeah. a new side of him. capable yeah. dude okay so while this is happening gabs is off to see octavius and he looks like he's like on a toilet i thought oh this yeah shot. this set was a little strange it, it looked like an ancient like roman was, toilet i guess it was but, meant to be a cell but it was yeah. just like it, it, a long set of stairs yeah. and, and then a, like this is like, toilet yeah because the, the toilets were all like in a row back then <laughs> <laughs> so it looked like he was on it well, he's crying, and he's all embarrassed by it, because, like, only little boys cry. Blah. He has to put the tears behind him and think of his people. Right. He's very into doing things for his people, which mm-hmm. is a big difference from Caesar, who right. only did stuff for himself. Yeah, he wants to correct, like, er- everything that Caesar did. No more exploitation of the peoples of the world. That sounds <laughs> That's good. Nice. That's yeah. nice. Woo. He wants a Roman peace, Pax Romana. Nice. This is... Yes, what he will end up doing when he becomes Augustus the Emperor. Well, Gabs is into it. She's like, great. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, I I read, like, I think it was an RJ quote where he was like, oh, I really loved the idea that, like, it was Gabs' influence on Mm -hmm. little Octavius that, like, led to this period of peace and prosperity in Rome. Uh-huh. And I was like, was it? It seems like he sort of said it. He said yeah. it. And she was like, That's cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. He just, he just needed that little bit little of you know, confidence yeah. from someone else being like, That's great. You got it, buddy. <laughs> so then Zita is back, you know, in her room on a balcony, staring wistfully at the moon. Yeah. Oh, poor Zita. She does a lot of that this episode, yeah. a lot of staring. Oh. Mm. Gaps comes out. Mm-hmm. It's been a while since we had like a balcony scene between them. Oh yeah, yeah, not since Chakram, I think. Oh wow. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, Zena's like, "You were right, Gabrielle. I do have a soft spot for bad boys." <laughs> Whoops. They were. It's funny because it's like she already said this about herself, didn't yeah. she? And in, in kindred spirits. But okay, okay. Even worse is a bad boy who loves like a fool. Mm. That's a great line. That's so true. Poor Zena. Yeah. Yeah, and this is where she's like, well, he can't really get control of Rome because I saw how he fights. So he has a lot of blood on his hands. Yeah. He's not afraid to spill it. But at the same time, she also thinks he meant what he said to her. So she's yeah. very conflicted. This guy, you know, she's done a bad. She's made it so this guy really loves her. And yep. she feels guilty, too. There's yeah. blood on her hands. Yeah, and then, of course, you know, they're worried what will happen when he finds out that she's duped him. Probably nothing good. Nothing bad. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gabs reports back about her own kind of inside scoop on somebody's character, in yeah. this case, Octavius. He's good. So <laughs> Yay. I guess they're Team Octavius now yeah. after one, one conversation with him. Yeah. and then But then Zena's like, well, what if like Antony teams up with him? Good luck with that, Zena. <laughs> <laughs> so we cut to Antony. Oh, uh, I love this transition. What was the transition? It was you, you cut to like the map. Oh, the yeah. The rug map, which yeah. is of... Rome and Egypt, just mm, kind of the whole Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah, that was so. He's like walking, and he's walking on it, and that was With like his sword out. <laughs> oh. He's like, I'm gonna fight you, rug. <laughs> I thought that was a very uh, Cersei Lannister season seven move. I thought of that too. <laughs> oh. 
And Zeno walks in and is like, well, what you up to, buddy? Making travel plans. <laughs> uh, good. I loved it. Good All line. of them are good. good All line. of them are good. <laughs> From the writer of Disturbia. <laughs> So he's, he says that he's trying to, like, outguess Brutus. And he, then he's like, well, yeah, so I'm going to outguess him, and then I'm going to win, and then when I win, I'm going to kill Brutus and, like, all his men. It's the Roman way. Yeah. yeah and and I am Roman. a Roman. Right. Yeah, because Zena's like, really? All of them? Even the common soldier? Because she's suddenly now like, fuck, you're bad. I really wanted you to be good. Like that time she killed all those soldiers in that episode we don't talk about. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I can't write, quite remember the lines in Destiny, but I feel like when Caesar betrays and rejects her, he says something about, I am Rome. Of course. Yeah. yeah. He so, always said yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's like one of his faves. Yeah. So I feel like she's kind of getting a flash to that, too. I am Roman. I am Rome. Like, God, yeah. her and these Romans, like, mm-hmm. they all kind of are yep. no good. Yeah. And then Zena asks, uh, what about Octavius? And... He goes, well, I have to kill him, too. He may be a good boy, but he can't live to be a good man. That's a good Oy, line. Yeah. But, yeah, pretty grim. This yep. guy ain't great. He might love Xena, but that doesn't mean he's a nice man. Yes. So then she offers him the Navy, yep. which he has already said he doesn't want. But let's see if he's going to take it. Oh, immediately he does. <laughs> yeah. So we get another really, like, really cool, like, uh, blocking shot here where the two of them kind of are in profile against the camera and uh, Zena tells him that he should attack Brutus at the mouth of the Nile and she's going to reinforce him with the Navy and then Brutus will be crushed and Anthony really likes hearing that and then he eats her hand <laughs> <laughs> Rome is sort eternally of grateful intense hand and mouth like <laughs> situation. Action. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of violent. <laughs> it's nice that it isn't just like clasp our hands. It's, yeah. it's like it looks like they're about to do like arm wrestling. <laughs> so yeah, the camera gets like closer and closer to them until it's like again pretty much close ups. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, you yeah. really feel like you know it's like a trap that mm-hmm. is like closing in on them all. Yeah. Good, good choreography that really tells you a lot about what's going on in the story. So then Brutus finally gets to see Cleopatra. And it's not what he expected. No. <laughs> uh, so Zena's sitting in the like throne. And yeah. I just I really enjoy the boo. Yeah. I do. Good shit. I enjoy it. Good shit. I mean, it's fun to see the side of Zena because she's been such a marshmallow I this know, episode. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, "That's right. I've been playing the part of Cleopatra because you killed her." Uh-oh. Whoa. And we expect him to deny it, or at least no. I did. And he's like, yup. He's, he starts singing <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yes, I lied. <laughs> yeah, he killed her because he needed the Navy. And he was like, well, mm-hmm. I definitely could not seduce her because look at me. Oh, poor and look at him. Poor Brutus. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't compete with yeah. Antony. He has a wonderful line here and wonderfully delivered, I thought, really chilling by David Franklin, where he says, when I killed Caesar, I crossed the Rubicon of blood. Mm. Yeah. I thought that was just such a great, you know, that's the blood innocence again. Yeah. But, you but know, like, let's Caesarify it. Yeah, let's Caesarify <laughs> it. I thought it was really good. And I think it cuts from him saying that to Gabrielle. Mm. You yes. know, we've seen lose yeah. her own blood innocence. Like, I love that their arcs are kind of mirroring each other. Right. And, it, you know, they both, like, spiraled into this dark place after Ides of March. Right. Like, Gabrielle, like, yeah. went on this path of being a warrior and engaging in violence. And so did Brutus. Yeah. So, Zena, he's like, why'd you call me here? And and she's like, well, because I'm going to give you the the, uh, the Navy. We have a common enemy, and it's Mark Antony. And then she tells Brutus, whoa. His fleet is heading to the Whoa. Nile, and you should go and attack him at the mouth of the Nile. And Brutus then isn't I, fooled. And then I'm going like. to give you the, I'm going to reinforce you. So, like, really? This seems too easy. Yeah. But then, Gabrielle volunteers to go with him, and he's, he, I love that he yeah. is so smart about this. He's like, oh, well, that's the best guarantee you guys could ever give me if you're yeah. giving me Gabrielle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good, clever stuff from, from Brutus. It's nice yeah. to see him being a smarty pants. Uh, I love how Brutus is like, you won't regret this. And mm. Zena just says in this like sullen voice, I won't regret this. <laughs> she regrets it already, you oh guys. Off to the battle they go. So we got two ships. We have Zena and Antony on one ship. 
and mm. Brutus and Gabs on another. And I like the symmetry of that. Yeah. And uh, do you like the symmetry of their helmets? Yes, I do <laughs> very do. much so. They're wearing some helmets. Uh, they're gold and white. They sort of look like liquid metal. Like kind of. Uh, I feel like Xena's is much more slinky and feminine, and Gabs is more like martial. She has like the chainmail and stuff. Mm. Oh yeah, she does have. Like some she looks mail. sort of like a battle commander, where Xena, I guess, looks like Cleopatra. You know, guess, the, yeah. the queen. So you're saying she's like Xena has a kind of like a Versace armor. Yeah, she's definitely <laughs> that dressed is the gold. by Versace. And I feel like this look is the most Liz Taylor. She has like the mm-hmm. headpiece. I think maybe the wig's longer. Mm. So like Antony is like already looking forward to their honeymoon. <laughs> he wants to take it uh, a journey on the scented waters of the Nile. Oh. On a golden barge with oars of silver, which will keep stroked. Oh no. Oh man. Stroked. <laughs> to the tune of flutes and make the waters which they beat to follow faster as if amorous of each stroke. Ridiculous. Obviously, Shakespeare. <laughs> yep. Uh, and I just love Zeta's response, which is, Antony, we're about to go into a major sea battle. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, sir. Please shut yeah, up. Not, not time for the poetry. Yeah. So then on, uh, on Brutus's boat, there is much less Shakespeare talk. It's mm. in, in fact, Brutus is kind of like, antsy and he's like well okay so like what's the plan let's run through it again please uh You're once gonna signal yeah once we engage Antony, that's when xena's gonna signal uh what's gonna happen i really love the blocking here you have uh brutus standing closer to the camera and gabrielle behind and she seems sort of troubled and detached mm-hmm. you immediately kind of know that she is plotting his death and it's like don't get too close <laughs> Yeah, uh, so Gab said that she's going to give the signal uh, once they do this, and then he goes, then we'll see who will become Rome. And they have a really good exchange after this. Yeah, this is a great scene. Lots of good lines. More close-ups of faces. She says, you've become an ambitious man, Brutus. He says, people change, Gabrielle. I remember when you spoke only of peace, and now you're a warrior. And you're a murderer. Dun, dun, dun. Jump into the water because you've been burned. <laughs> but that was such a good exchange. Yeah. It's like both points are there and it's so true. And then we, when he last saw her, yeah. I mean, she's completely she's different. Completely different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. not that he's seen a super lot of her warrioring, but yeah. he, I think you can clearly you tell. Can tell. That, and it helps that she's literally dressed in this like yeah. Yeah. general's outfit. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I mean, I, I look at this and I'm like, I'm sad for Brutus. I'm sad that he's become this person in the yeah. same way that I'm, I'm a little sad that Gabrielle has yeah. you know, lost her innocence and become this person. Of course. And I can't help but think that, you know, I mean, Brutus killing Caesar, which seems to have been the thing that sent him on this path, was like something that like Xena and Gabrielle yeah. put him up to, right. and, like needed him to do. <clears throat> they like manipulated him into doing it. So I, it's interesting that the episode doesn't really engage with, you know, the mm. complicated mm. like complicity here. But it's is, there. It's definitely there. I think this is, this is actually a very morally ambiguous episode, like across the board. Totally. Like even though it seems in some ways like it's making things morally, you know, less complicated by having Brutus suddenly be like, hey, I'm a bad guy now. Uh, at the same time, yeah, you can't help but think about the circumstances that right. led him to right. become this person. I think that we've... Uh, encountered this before. I mean, I think a lot of this show, Xena you know, Warrior Princess, is built on this. Where, Callisto. Is, well, is a good like example. where <laughs> Xena orbits people and affects them. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, obviously, Callisto, like, yes, that's like the main one. But also in that episode, uh, A Good Day, I think, mm-hmm. right? They went to this town and this huge battle happened to those local people because Caesar, you know, hates Xena. Yeah. So it's just and that boy killed someone. Yeah, and exactly. You don't know what's going to happen to him. Right. So it's just like every basically every day they like affect someone. Yeah. And a lot of it is this cycle of violence where they bring violence into people's lives. Not that Brutus wasn't already living a pretty violent life to begin sure. with. Sure. Yeah. His name is Brutus. You know, I mean we we made the comparison back in Ides of March that Brutus was like the Gabrielle to Caesar mm-hmm. Xena. So right, he's yeah. killed his Xena. Mm-hmm. You know, imagine like yeah. how much that would fuck someone up. How right. much that would yeah. fuck Gabs up. And that's why yeah. this scene is so good that 
this is included in this episode yeah. where they're calling each other out. It's just a bummer, in, in my opinion, that they go immediately to we have to kill him instead of like trying to like rehabilitate him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's been such an interesting character. Yeah. It's sad that he goes out this way. But I mean, I do think it's earned. And, you know, the fact that it's Gabrielle who's going to do the I mean, killing is yeah. just... I mean, if anything, I just wish this episode had been more part of a long arc the way yes. season four yes. was, because this is setting up some really interesting stuff. And, you know, it doesn't get dropped exactly, but yeah. it just doesn't... It, it's not an arc in the, in the way right. I want it, where like you'd have episodes of follow through. Mm-hmm. So Octavius and Shanna are on their on the Egyptian main ship, and he uh, has a scene with her where he's like, "Why are you here all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you keep making these like faces? Like you have some agenda." <laughs> and she says that she promised her mistress she'd watch her murderers brought to justice. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we see that? Cool. I don't know. If you say so, Shanna. Yeah. And then she's like. Oh, uh, you're going to be real famous soon, Octavius, so oh, don't worry about it. Oh, and he does it. a line. Oh, <laughs> man, yeah, this is a scary line. Ready? He says he's, was, he feels like he was born for this moment. He realizes it's his destiny, destiny. to rule Rome. So destiny, uh, that's a little alarming to hear from this guy's mouth. It's the same thing as Caesar. That makes us worry that this guy actually isn't the appropriate person right. to lead Rome. And even more ambiguity in this episode. Are Zena and Gab's doing right by putting power in the hands of this mm-hmm. person? And doesn't yeah. it seem like literally anybody who gets caught in the web of the Roman plot yeah. ends up a bad person? Well, yeah. It makes you worry about Gabrielle and Zena a lot. But I guess if you know, like, historical spoilers, I mean, Pax Romana is a real thing. I think Augustus was probably one of of the more stable and smart rulers of Rome. But, Mm. I mean, it doesn't mean he was a good person. (laughs) (laughs) I think he executed a lot of people to get there. Okay, so it's time for the battle. Xena lights the signal, and uh, then the Egyptian fleet attacks. But attacks both (gasps) the ships Uh, of Brutus and Antony. Oh my goodness. We should say that all of this looks pretty good. Yeah. All this yes. naval battle stuff. Good stuff. This good is stuff. like a real big deal. They like sprung for ships ramming ship, each other. Actual ship in water battle stuff. Yeah, what tank stuff. Well, so, well at least bit. there's water. Yeah, like, there was some water. And stuff. Yeah, no, they went like, to like a place yeah, with water and they, and they filmed cool. it. And But the rain is real. The rain is real, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought that was a great detail yeah. that they just decided to include the real oh, rain. That was yeah. so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looked great. And they start fighting. Holy right, well, this is like everything's shit. happening all That's at true. once. Yeah. So yeah. Brutus's ship uh, it rams Antony's ship. And all the soldiers kind of like start fighting, they jump onto the boats. It becomes like basically like one boat set. Uh, there's screams of, for the glory of Brutus, and then from the other guys, for Imperial Rome. So it's like, you can see, mm-hmm. you can see maybe like what's better here. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, you know, one is like Brutus. <laughs> Yay, me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we see that, yeah. But of course, when people de- declare I am Rome, it's true. also, it's also a bad thing. Yeah. So fights, 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 and then, yeah, you're talking about uh, how Brutus realizes that the Egyptian fleet is attacking both of them, and he's like, what? (laughs) And then he turns to Gabrielle, and he's like, you knew. He still feels so betrayed. Yeah. They were friends. Yeah. And they start fighting, and they start fighting in slow-mo. I think that's important. Okay. More important slow-mo. Yes. Then I like that there's this, like, pan up to Xena, like, up on the whatever you call it there's <laughs> yeah. like stairs that go up part of the ship sure <laughs> Shit. and like she's kind of watching everything yeah because she's still not fighting she's still like cleopatra yeah she's sort of presiding you yeah. feel she just stands yeah. at the top of these steps like looking down at everybody get to the fun stuff right this is the fun stuff the the big fight between brutus and gabrielle so he, he hits her a lot a in, lot in, in the face right in the <laughs> face so much and they we have said this before, but I really do enjoy, especially in the last couple of seasons, the more realistic use of blood and special effects yeah. makeup and stuff. And this is brutal. It's gross. She has blood like splurting out of her nose. It's yeah. intense. And I think yeah. that it like, I mean, sometimes you could say that them not having 
those kind of realistic effects make these moments more effective because you don't expect it. It's really true. So, yeah. yeah, when stuff like this happens, you're like, oh, no. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, I wish she wasn't wearing the helmet here well, because it does ruin it for vids, I'm just oh, saying. <laughs> I don't think the helmet's just put it that in. bad. It's just a little like silly. Like I said, it adds to her being this warrior. It's not silly in context, but in a vid it is. All right. That's how it works. Okay, if you say so. I'm just saying. Yeah, but it is really great. It is very uh, violent. Um she falls over like that's Kicks how. Her. Yeah. yeah, he like throws her. So yeah. Yeah. I love the blocking here. He's looming large in the frame as he comes in to basically kill her. It's the only time he's been large this episode. It's true. Huh? Yeah, because shot underneath and he just takes up the whole frame. He's going to strike. But then she picks up a sword and with this intense close up. <gasps> oh, man, this close up. Of her up. like, you know, bloody face. And this, like, rage. Mm -hmm. She swings and slices his throat. Good stuff. Yeah. I also really love the shot of Brutus falling. He kind of falls out of He falls out of... (laughs) Yeah, he falls out of frame, out of focus. Like, backwards. Very, very, very very slow way. Yeah, he falls on his back. And, like, then it continues to be awesome because this episode's really good. Uh, He sees... (laughs) <laughs> upside down we see his yeah. upside down POV. shot yeah it's so yeah. good POV of, yeah and this is what i was referring to i think when i said that like this is some stuff you've never seen on xena yeah. i thought this like very subjective mm-hmm. point of view shot was so cool and so well used yeah so he sees <laughs> xena and he goes and screams xena even though i don't think he could Probably because he got his throat slit. That's yeah, true. I don't know how it works. I don't know how it works. It yeah. still feels very <laughs> painful and gross. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. I mean, that's his last, like, his last yeah. breath and life is spent screaming Zena. Zena. And somehow then, you know, when you cut to him and he's upside down, it somehow makes him look sort of grotesque mm-hmm. in his dying moment. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's an upsetting death. Yeah, and it's very major, and I just kind of want to circle back to the slow-mo of it. Um, it, it was fascinating, like... Hearing sort of like the reasoning for the first use of slow-mo was to show the brutal nature of Antony. Thought it was uh, interesting to bring it back here. Obviously, it's just more dramatic to look at something like this in slow-mo because then you cut to like the other fights and their normal speed, right? Yeah. You come back and it's slow-mo and dramatic. But also like... Yeah, you can go, oh, it's so brutal, like how Brutus... Brutal is, how Brutus... Yes, <laughs> how Brutus is like beating her up. But I, th- I think it's really like trying to point out the brutal nature of Gabrielle here because she slits this dude's throat so insanely and not in like the way that she was, you know, killing men left and right in Eyes of March. Like that was like some kind of like, you know, thing. Like I think here it was like now she's capable of this just by herself. Like and and you felt this. like there was feeling behind it. It wasn't just, yes. I'm doing this because I'm a soldier in a war. She was doing it because she was, like, angry at Brutus. Yeah. She, she felt betrayed by Brutus. Right. And, yeah, it's a big moment for her. You you see that on her face in, in that amazing close-up. Just this, you know, like you said, this rage, this yeah. fury. This is real bloodlust, I think, mm-hmm. we're seeing on Gabs. Right. So it's, it's interesting, to, I think, to equate her, like, in that slow-mo way with, what he was trying to do with Antony. Yeah. That's what I think. And we were saying that Antony reminded Zena of herself. So oh. Now, what does that say about Gabs here? OTP, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so after the big scream of Zena, uh, Antony's... Um, he hears the big yeah, scream. Yeah, he right? hears and he's like, what? And his lieutenant, his lieutenant runs up and he's like, oh my gosh, so like the Egyptian fleet is like attacking both of our, you know, fleets from the rear. And he's like, Both? Zena. <laughs> he puts it together. He's, sad. He's really sad. Very betrayed. Yeah. He comes over to her. He got catfished. Yeah, yes. So they fight and they they fight in these slow-mo spurts. Right? Ooh. They fight and then they talk. Ooh. And then they fight and then they and talk. And her fighting is real good because she doesn't wanna she kind yeah. of doesn't want to fight him. She keeps like jumping back. Yeah. Like, ducking him and stuff right such a contrast with gabrielle 
Gabrielle, yeah. who was coming on so strong, and mm-hmm. Zena, meanwhile, is so conflicted about right. violence here. I mean, I think he, too, is, like, opposite yeah. of Brutus, like, no, you know? There's, this is such a good fight, because they don't want to fight each other, and yeah. they don't want to kill each other. They're, like, sad fighting. It's so <laughs> tragic. It's so, it's so tragic and beautiful. Star-crossed lovers. Yeah. <laughs> but then, like, you know, there's, like, that pause, and then he, he has a choice. In a, yeah. you, you, we see the moment where he has the he choice, chooses. and then he, like, super attacks. Her he she has to yeah. kill him. He makes a cry face. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you know he's, he's like, done for. Super attack. <laughs> yeah. You're like, not the cry face, man. Oh, no. Yeah, let's see. That's, uh, that's I think he a, definitely does those in Spartacus. Too. Yeah, he's <laughs> very good at the too. cry. Yeah. No wonder I love this shit so much. It's like, Sad, bloody faced man. Oh, crying. she's bloody too. I yeah. love that. Like she yeah, has like it's a on her big streak of blood and on her on white her on her white gown as yeah. well. Yeah, it didn't get on the like Versace middle side. No. Only on like her on boob the white. and then like <laughs> the underneath. Oh, is it Tamir Cleopatra's boob asp? Sure. No, I mean okay, but it's also like all sure. over the rest of her dress, but just the top. Half. Okay, so yeah, she uh, she skewers him. She skewers him. Yeah, then their and faces are like yeah, right, very close. Yeah, close ups. It kind of mirrors all their like profile shots from before. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, just there's a lot of love scene. Ooh, yeah, yeah some <laughs> penetration. Oh no! Finally, it happened. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "I did love you." Oh. Uh, and then he falls over. He falls like he rolls down the steps because she was on that part of the ship yeah, like with the, the steps, yeah, as Katie that said. Part. You know that part. <laughs> <laughs> and so he fa- he rolls down them towards camera, and that it's a great shot. That very much mirrored the carpet unroll. <gasps> so, oh my god, that's so good. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I love it. And you know, it's just so sad. This you feel like, you know, this great man falling yeah. and rolling. Yeah, I mean like also undignified uh, like yeah. yeah, both of him and well, I guess Brutus not so much undignified. Mm, he I just mean, fell over, but like yeah, he like rolled down some steps. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, and then after that is like a big crane shot of all these like sad soldiers cuz like after that they're all defeated and they're just kind of like sitting the common soldier is just sitting there Confused. all around um lots of people are dead. Yeah, lots the of people are dead. The entire ship is full of dead bodies. The rain is real. And you and, have Zena yeah. and Gabs both standing there, both kind of covered in blood. Mm-hmm. These two soldiers, and yeah, yeah they're, you feel like they're. It's almost an, a post, like a post-apocalyptic image. Like they're yeah. the last Fire. people alive. OTP. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also very grim because yeah, like they're yeah, it's, it's, so yeah. steeped in blood. Right. Yeah. So uh, then there's uh, the, that's over, and we dissolve to Zena. Kind of giving Octavia's her blessing to lead Rome. Oh, yeah. I thought this was a great close-up, how it dissolves to this, like, big close-up of Xena, mm-hmm. just kind of looking really troubled. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I feel like the psychology of Xena throughout this episode is really, like, well yeah. photographed. Are you talking about know. the shot of her beautiful face and, like, in her hair in the wind? Yes. 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 <laughs> in the wind. <laughs> yes. She's back in her regular clothes. Yeah. Thankfully. <laughs> Uh, so yeah we kind of get this final scene with her and Octavius who was like trying to thank her and stuff but she like doesn't want his thanks she's like don't fuck it up yeah come on little kid yeah (laughs) and then she has this weird speech about Cleopatra is like like I don't know this like great liberator or something for her people and that like they should be a democracy yes she wanted a democracy it's so weird because that is not true (laughs) and then they show like this shot of Chiana being like elect Chiana queen. Oh, yeah, queen Chiana. What? She was little 2018. Weird. Yeah, it was a little weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I, apparently Rob somewhere said it was like him trying to comment on the Middle East. Just oh my like, God, Rob. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Why were they doing? Like, I don't know. They... It like just made no sense. I I guess I like the idea that like you bring back. You know, you have to mention the real Cleopatra, who this episode has just ignored. Ignored. <laughs> She's not there. Totally just, changed every, you know, lots of things. Yeah. 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 Kind of sidelined her from her own story. It's not really cool. Yeah. But yeah. At the same time, <laughs> the way that they do it is just not historically accurate right. or or yeah. even makes sense. Uh, so yeah, what she was Egypt. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> if you say so. Okay, 
So after that kind of speech, Zena just like walks off and starts staring at the more, you know, that same green yeah. screenshot as like the beginning. She loves to stare. She's off looking into for the, the Burger King. He's <laughs> <laughs> so hungry. <green. And laughs> over there. <laughs> And Gabs comes over and she's all like smiling and then she sees Zita is sad. Mm-hmm. So she kind of like stops smiling. Yeah. Which is weird because you think she should be troubled too. Yeah. If she did the bad murder. <laughs> but Maybe she liked all the speeching and stuff. Yeah. It yeah. made her feel better and about everything. you know, at the end of the day, the man who was going to come between uh, them uh, is dead. So yeah. she's like, la la la, hey, we're back, we, right? Let's go pick up yeah. Eve from the babysitter. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, but then, you know, she's respectful, like, you know, for Zena's loss, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I it was really so. fascinating that Zena was, it's the same shot, right? So, like, before, I don't know, it was, let's do this thing yeah. and, you know, help Cleopatra or whatever. And now she's staring at the same pyramids. And is she thinking about their uh, night under the pyramids? <laughs> I don't know. That's what, I she you know, might be. she has to be, because uh, be. that's what she thinks about the pyramids now. So uh, that... Yeah. Concludes Antony and Cleopatra. A good one. Yeah, it is a good one. I, I want. Do you think fandom likes it, or I don't know. is the fact that it's about Xena being in love with a man, you know, not not everybody's favorite subject matter? You know, I'm sure it was, but I'm sure they enjoyed, you know, the the textual uh, problem that it caused Gabrielle. I just feel like it's so on the surface that that is like an issue, mm-hmm. and it's such a part of it. I mean, obviously. She, the people could have problems with her having real feelings for this man when she's already in a relationship. Um, but the whole like conflict is that Zena's doing this and is like can't really be doing it. So you can kind of work do a workaround, yeah. you know what I mean? Like these yeah. things happen. She was in never gonna be you, with this man. She has feelings and <laughs> like, she's upset yeah. about it. I'm sure yeah. she feels like she's betraying Gabrielle too. That's mm-hmm. part of the feelings. Right, yeah. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know about the puppet. I think maybe the carnival sequence, like, <laughs> is not everybody's like, favorite. But it's so funny because she comes in and inserts yeah. herself into the I scene. I know it it's is just pretty so amazing. Thin. Oh no, and I don't mean like just. I mean just generally that it exists. Oh, that it exists. Like, yeah, mute, like, that was it's definitely a, really a little ridiculous. embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It's, yeah. But uh, that's one of those moments <laughs> where I feel like once you're in it, then you love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I love it. I but if care. you turned it, your TV on and that's yeah, the like, part you the saw, fuck? you'd be like, uh. Yeah, exactly. I think it helped for me in the rewatch that I became such a fan of Manu Bennett from mm-hmm. Spartacus, which we watched that's after true. Zena. That's true, you're right. So, like, I go back to Antony and Cleopatra, and he's so good that, like, I, I feel like that keeps it from being hilarious. It's that you feel like the sexual tension is real. If anything, mm-hmm. they could have played it up less because, like, it's mm-hmm. there. I think that the first time we watched it, like, I was not impressed by him. Oh, yeah? Really? Because he was like, you know... I don't know. I It's weird. Like, the only Roman dudes that they've introduced that I was, like, okay with were obviously Caesar and <laughs> um, Brutus, uh, final Brutus, David Franklin Brutus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think I grew to really enjoy Pompey, but like, whenever they you know shoehorn in these dudes who I don't feel Augustus, like I don't know, yeah. yeah, like I'm like I don't know you, and you're kind of like whatever. Like even um, like Crassus was like a blah. Oh know? yeah, he doesn't make much impression. Yeah, so well, I think Anthony does make yeah, an impression. Me too. But do you feel that now? Because yeah, well, I certainly do. Yeah. Like now that I know this guy from stuff, yeah, I'm like, I think that oh, helps it's him, sometimes. and I like it. But you know, originally I was like. This day when she's into him? I think it's hard because you have to get over your, you know, your trauma from things like Ulysses that have, you know, thrown men at her. And, like, like every time this happens, you roll your eyes. So this time, you're, like, I I definitely rolled my eyes when I first saw it. I was like, oh, my God, why why are we doing this now? We just had Xena and Gaz get back together after Kindred Spirits. And now Xena's, like, in love with a man. Oh, my God. (laughs) What's the continuity? What's happening? (laughs) But at the same time, I think, yeah i mean if you can kind of divorce those feelings from it and just look at the story it's telling like i think it's very Mm -hmm. true to the characters it's interesting because like apparently lucy lawless has said that she did not care for her performance in this episode she played she felt she played it too angsty Mm. that she wishes Zena had been more pragmatic because then, then it would have been a little less like, oh, she really loves him, and yeah. it's gonna, and a little bit more um, conflicty with how I'm trying to explain how you can make it 
be a little bit more, like, I guess, respectful to her being in, you know, the relationship we just saw, like, last week with her and Gab's being, you know, trying to settle down or whatever, like, with her, like, being like, I am fucking with this man and I feel bad about it and... I do kind of like him and this is, you know what I mean? Versus yeah. like, she's really into him. She's like crying and like really <laughs> upset all the time. Yeah. I get that. But I, you know, I like it because it is so true to kind of the classical source where mm. this is a great love affair, you know? Or you could just say that she's like really got into being Cleopatra, that this is how she was acting, like how Cleopatra would act. <laughs> <laughs> she's a method actor. <laughs> Well, that's good. I think it's good, and everybody should watch Spartacus because yeah, they're absolutely. yeah they're great in that. And Michael Hurst again, like we said, mm-hmm. directs a lot of episodes of yeah, that. Of that. Um, it's also just like a stunning show with a bajillion dollars, and so like yeah, lots of good slow mo. There's so much of there there's so much of slow-mo. like what will be Spartacus. I feel like in the look of this, like yeah. them in the baths and doing stuff. Mm-hmm. But like mm-hmm. yeah, it's yeah. just if you threw like, just a, the, like a lot of, of dollars it. at like, it. <laughs> It's, like, so voluptuous, you know? Yes. It's just, like, trying to be sexy. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good it's good. Yeah. yeah. So All right. We did it. So, yeah. yeah, so just a reminder, no new episode on Labor Day. We'll be at Dragon Con. Yeah. Hooray. Okay, I guess uh, that else? wraps it up. Yeah, that's it. Stuff and things. Stuff Follow and things. Us. Follow us on the social medias and listen to things. Go to uh, xenowarepodcast.com where you can find... Uh, all of the links and such. Uh, and we are on Apple Podcasts where you can leave stars mm-hmm. and ratings mm-hmm. and reviews, etc. Helps um, people find us. Yep. What else? Twitter at Xena Warrior Pod for extra commentary. Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, yeah. Xena mm-hmm. Warrior Podcast. Yep. The power. The passion. The, the podcast. podcast.